So this first session, what we're going to look at is the basics of what we call REAC. And REAC stands for the Roland Ethernet Audio Communication Protocol. And that allows everything you see in front of you to talk to each other, both audio and all the control information. So let's, take, let's, let's lay this foundation before we get into the, the training part. There's really four building blocks that make up the vMixing system. There's the I.O., the input-output modules, the digital snakes, we call them. There's the actual console, which you consider the cornerstone of the system. There's the personal mixing part for musicians, the monitoring side. And then there's the playback, virtual rehearsal, recorder part of the system. All of this works together as one. That's a very important point. They talk intimately with each other. They can all work on their own, but they're better when they're all working together. And that's exactly what we have in this room here. So this is just a picture of the family of products that make up the vMixing system. You can see quite a few choices of snake heads, input output modules, different consoles to choose from. Everything works with each other. So you can start with a small system and grow. So let's just take a look at the, that foundational React piece first. It's 40 channels in both directions, so that's a total of 80. It handles all the control information. So when you turn one of the middle knobs, the preamp knob on the top, it actually uh, affects the preamp that's maybe 300 feet away in a digital snake head. That's that control data. It handles MIDI data. It's a 24-bit, 96 kilohertz protocol, and it's all handled over CAT 5E or 6 uh, uh, cable uh, or optical. So the fact that it's uh, category 5 or 6 means it's very inexpensive for installation, very lightweight. Uh, what you see there is a 100-meter or 330-foot 80-channel snake, essentially, in about 12 pounds. So that's uh, what CAT 5 brings to you. Not only that... Uh, convenience factor, it brings the quality uh, of the audio. And certainly, uh, Terry, the audio engineer, is here today, and, and Sonny, you can talk to them at any time about what their audio quality, what, what that's meant uh, to them. And one of those little pieces that happens with long runs of copper, especially if you're in the few hundreds of feet of copper, you get a roll-off that happens in the high frequencies. And that just is not there with the digital snake because you're converting it to a digital signal very close to the source. So in this particular case, say we've got a, a keyboard or a drum set or a mic, uh, all that's happening on that mic is it's running maybe 10 or 15 feet to the snake head that's underneath this stage. And then it's converted into that digital world, a, an A to D converter, and it runs all the way to the back. Now in this room it's not that far, but it could be hundreds and hundreds of feet away. And it's just as if that mic cable back to that console is still 10 feet long. Uh, as opposed to if all of your input output jacks are on the console itself, then that line has to run that whole distance and it's gonna lose some of the high ends. Practically speaking, what does that mean? It means some of the highs in like your symbols aren't as clear, the snap of your snare, some of the, the breathiness in the voice starts to uh, muddy. And you don't know that until you A-B it. Um, and, uh, and we can certainly arrange to do that in, your, in, in a system or in a client or in your church or in your school, wherever you're from. And, and so you can actually hear the difference. Uh, the other important part about going digital is that at that point it's not going to be interfered with by any RF or ground loop hums, and so you can run that Cat5 right beside a lighting rig or right by the dimmer packs in the room, and you're not going to pick up any uh, hum or noise. So it, it eliminates some of those, those headaches that, that happen from time to time. Um, if we look at the uh, convenient part, especially if you're involved in a retrofit like this room, we'll hear a little bit about, more about that later. But if, if you're retrofitting a room, you don't want to have to install cable that's maybe you know three inches round. That means conduit. It means a whole lot of expense that uh, you can eliminate when you're running uh, Cat5. Just the final technical pieces in here, and this is the, hopefully the most text you'll see on the screen uh, today. This convenient factor of the Cat5, the 
The fact that we use the Ethercon connectors, you see on all of our products, we don't like just the plastic tab plugged in from your normal network cable. We actually hate it. So we um, put these little Ethercon things on. You can get them uh, online. Uh, on the surface, they look like an XLR connector on, because of the sheath around it, but it's a nice metal click that happens with that slot in the top. And so you're not relying on that plastic uh, network part that breaks off after, what, 10 times you connect it and it's gone. So uh, you'll see all of our products have that nice Ethercon. You don't have to use them, but we just like them uh, for the purposes because we're always moving around um, from place to place. If you need to run more than a few hundred feet, you can uh, connect it to an Ethernet switch and extend it another uh, 100 meters or 300 feet. Or use, because it's an, REAC is an Ethernet protocol, you can use any standard IP type uh, switches and or converters to fiber. And you can find some of those online uh, cheaper and cheaper every day now. So now you can go a couple miles or a few miles uh, just using a, uh, a Ethernet to fiber converter. Another important part of the console that um, you will experience today um, is the fact that you won't hear any latency. So if that's, a, that's the right statement, no latency, very low latency. The one, one direction is 375 microseconds. So the full round trip out to the console through everything and back again is in, in around the two, two and a half uh, milliseconds. And the way that really is tested is drummers or vocalists. When you hit that snare or when you sing, you get a skeletal response in your head that comes back to your ears through the personal mixers. And if there's something not right, you're gonna hear phasing, you're gonna hear a delay. The snare, the drummer won't feel the, the, the shock of hitting the snare up his or her arm should match what's coming through the ear. So if latency was a problem, we would have known about it years ago. Um, so we're, we're very happy with the fact that it's, it's uh, the round trip for all of this is very short. Uh, last point that it uh, supports is PoE, which is embedded power or power over Ethernet. So uh, the M48s you see in front of you, for example, have just one cable connected to it, um, which is the Cat5 cable with power. So all the power, all the data, all the control happens over one uh, cable. It makes it very clean looking. So... The REAC then protocol has a couple more basic functions before we move on to the fun stuff. There's the concept of a master and a slave, and that's all to do with who runs the clock, who's maintaining the clock that has to happen to convert uh, analog to digital signal. So something has to be designated a master and something a slave, and then those 40 channels go back and forth between those two entities. And uh, typically, that's going to be a console to a snake. In addition to that audio, though, we have uh, control. That is uh, not just audio, but the fact that when I twiddle a knob or press a button, something might happen in the slave or master device. There's two-way control. Now, for those uh, other devices that hang off, um, they are called splits. And you can have as many splits as you want. And that just replicates, it's like a listening post. It just sends all of those outputs. And it's all possible with just an ethernet switch. Now we make a switch, you can see some here after down in front, it's just a regular ethernet switch. We like ours because it has the ethercon connectors. It's not a plastic box that uh, you can break or has a wall wart. Um, but you can split that out hundreds of times if you want and every uh, split on the system will hear that and so that's how this room is set up right now we have a console at the back all of these uh, uh, mic sources set up the live band's going to play tonight uh, we'll play some material through the playback unit and you're all going to see it all across all your consoles and on the uh, R1000 recorders and these uh, units are just all patched in with a switch so we're getting this many replications. Could you imagine trying to wire this room for eight or 10 or 12, or we've had 20 consoles out there? That would be a, you know, an 80 by 80, uh, an 80 times you know, 26. I mean, it's ridiculous. That, uh, it would, 
It would take up a small you know, quarter of this room to put all the, all the splits in there that it would take to do it. So um, with one cable, one switch, these are all sitting. So you're basically sitting behind what in, in this world, because of the way we've wired it, monitor consoles. So this room, there's the front of house console there. And this room has eight different monitor consoles now that you're going to mix your own stuff to. So that's all made possible, again, with the React uh, protocol. So on a typical console, that's going to be a master. Then we're going to go to a snakehead, which will be a slave. And then we put a little switch in there. And we can pile anything we want on the, on the switch. We're going to go through what this looks like practically uh, later on this afternoon. Uh, but that's how we get all of our personal mixers. They're just splits hanging off the end of the switch. Or we can throw a monitor console or a, a, another console to go to a broadcast feed or maybe a web stream feed where the audio has got to be mixed slightly different, um, differently, at least for the room. And what we do on the console, though, is give you two React ports, not just one. So in that case, we can have two slaves and many more inputs. In fact, before the end of the session, I'll show you how we actually get to 90 by 90. So that's basically the upper limit of this system. Uh, the 480 you're sitting in front of is a 90 input by 90 output um, a solution. Uh, two more concepts I just want to get out of the way. In addition to what I've just talked about, we have merge technology, the ability to take snake heads and distribute them out. So it's like you have more than one slave then on one React system. The other concept is if you are working with a uh, different console or have to patch into, uh, in, in this case, a broadcast uh, application, that is run on MADI very frequently, which is the multi-channel audio digital interface. And so we allow you to convert into MADI and pretty well every uh, large console out there supports MADI. So it's a way to talking to other systems uh, and we can show you some examples of that later.